So today we're going to talk about a topic that nobody wants to talk about, mites. So if you talk about mites, that means you have mites, right? Well, everybody gets mites and I'm going to talk about it because I have had mites. Now this is a video all about mites. We're going to get into it. I'm going to tell you how I treat for mites. This isn't the only way. I'm going to tell you how I prevent mites from coming in. And I'm going to tell you how I kill mites once I've gotten them and how I keep them from spreading around the rest of my facility. And so let's get into it. Let's check out and see what I've learned over 38 years of keeping boas. So I need to explain. So within this video, probably the most important point that I'm going to make, it's going to be throughout the video, but it's going to be to detail exactly how you can prevent the mites from spreading throughout your collection. So if you, if you get mites, it's usually going to be very isolated and just one animal, a new animal, or you're going to accidentally drop a mite from a show and then you're going to have them in one rack. So how do you prevent that from becoming an epidemic? So that is the most important thing you can learn from this video. And I give a number of very specific, very detailed tips on what you can do to prevent the mites from spreading all over the place. And that's the most important thing you need to learn from this video. So if, if you just jump around or you skip the video or you don't watch the whole thing, you're not going to get it. But if you watch it, trust me, when you see me showing some particular points of some very specific little things you can do to prevent the proliferation and the expansion of mites, you're going to watch that and you're going to say, wow, that's a good idea. Wow, I didn't think of that. Well, I've been doing this a long time, so I've thought of a number of things. Things to cut it off at the neck, keep it from going any farther. And if you don't watch all of the video, you're not going to see it. You're not going to get it. So it's very important that you watch that. So hopefully it's mildly entertaining, massively informative, and you enjoy it. If you do comment, like it. Very helpful. Enjoy it and let me know exactly what you think. So I'm shooting this video from a little different spot. Uh, not looking down the aisle, uh, the center aisle of my uh, big snake room, but my baby room. So this is where I have uh, a nice chunk of the babies that I produced this year. Not all of them, but uh, everybody's got a label. Pink, uh, pink for girls, blue for boys. Isn't that cute? Anyways, not too clever, but uh, this is going to be a video about mites and how to treat for mites. So since it's a mite video, that makes this a mighty video, doesn't it? You know it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a little kid with new toys at Christmas. But yeah, still working on trying to keep myself in shape, getting myself in better and better condition after two rotator cuff surgeries and being a fat guy my whole life. So, and never working out. But uh, I've changed all that. So let's get to the mites. Mites are at hand. So mites are tiny blood-sucking parasites. In particular, we're going to talk about snake mites. So snake mites are unique to snakes. Um, they theoretically, they could take blood from a lizard, but they typically do not infest lizards. They could take blood from you, theoretically, but that's not where they want to go to eat. They want to get on the back of your snake, get under the little scales, and suck the blood of your boas. So my information is based on 38 years of keeping boa constrictors. Um, this is not applicable to ball pythons or retics or berms or colubrids. Uh, I do not have experience with those. I have a friend of mine that treated some ball pythons the same way that I treat my boas. 
and he lost a few baby ball pythons doing it that way. So I highly discourage anyone from trying it with ball pythons. And this is just the way that I've done it and my experience. Uh, and also I'm going to talk about some of the ways I've done it in the past that actually work, that are effective, that people don't talk about so much. But uh, it's important to know that there is more than one way to treat for mites. So mites come from two places. They come from Southeast Asia and they come from other people's collections who have mites. That's it. They don't come, they don't come from South America. They don't come from Central America. None of those animals come into our country with mites. They came from primarily probably pythons that came in from Southeast Asia that ended up in private collections. So everyone has mites uh, at one time or another. If you do this any length of time, you're going to get mites. Uh, you do everything you possibly can to keep yourself from getting mites, but you probably are going to get mites because nobody's perfect. Every new animal that I bring in when I buy a new animal has mites. Every single one. Uh, at least that's how I treat them because I don't want a mite infestation. So I treat everything that comes in. I use only permectrin and I'll get into nitty-gritty detail on how I do it, how I mix it, how I apply it. But every single new animal I bring in, which I'm also I'm bringing in a new animal today coincidentally, and he will be treated for the mites that he's got, whether he's got them or not. Doesn't matter who it comes from. You get a boa from me, you need to treat it for my mites because I might have mites. That's right. <laughs> I don't think I do. I've talked to many people that say, I don't have mites. Well, you don't know if you have mites or not. You think you don't, but you could have mites and you could have them for weeks or maybe months before you become aware of it. So lest we, any of us, get too cocky about not having mites, how about showing a little humility? Because everyone gets mites. Everyone gets mites at one time or another. If you haven't had them yet, keep doing this you'll get them. You can take all of the precautions necessary and you may get mites. Probably will. So you'll need to know how to treat for them. So I'm going to treat, uh, show you how to treat boas, only boas, boa constrictors. And this is the way that I've done this. And uh, with Permectrin, uh, most recently, say in the last 10, 12 years, is how I've treated it. But in years past, we used Years ago, the first time I got mites was about 1988, 88 or 89. So a while ago, 33, 34 years ago, the way we treated for mites back then was no pest strip. Oh, I know, no pest strip. Oh, don't say no pest strip. Well, no pest strip works. It worked. For years, it was the only way we had to treat mites. Now, you can uh, technically overdose with no pest strip, but you can use it with caution, and it is an effective way to treat for mites. I don't do it that way anymore because, oh, it was about 12, 14 years ago, I had a mite infestation. This was in, like, December of the year, so in the middle... I'm already going full bore on my breeding season. And I put a little piece about that big a pest strip in all of my big cages. I never put it in the little shoe boxes. Uh, I'd hang it in the room, but I would never put it in the shoe boxes. And I put the little piece of pest strip in each cage, leave it in for about a week or two, take it out, wait about three weeks, and then put it back in again for another week, and that would eliminate it. Well, when I did that, that ended my breeding season that year. So I watched all of my females who had thickened up, developing egg follicles in preparation for uh, eventual ovulation. And I just had a very, very miserable breeding season. In fact, Big Mike, of basically Boa's fame, gave me grief for years 
about uh, uh, Jeff Ronnie breeding season. So, but it was due to the mites. That was the worst breeding season I ever had. Um, because I had used Pest Strip, which completely took the females out of their cycle. So for that reason, I have never used Pest Strip since then um, in all of my cages because it's just too risky because you don't want to end your breeding season. So I don't know what would happen if I treated in June, um, but I am not willing to try it. So since then, I've only used Permectrin. I had to find a different way after that happened, and that's when I found Permectrin. It's very, very bad for the breeding season, but if you're just a keeper or you're just raising animals or you just have a pet, Pest strip works. That's a fact. Um, I know there are a lot of these people that are like, they talk about pest strip like it's the devil. And the fact is, it is an effective way to kill mites. It kills all flying insects. And it's not the devil. But it's not the way I would choose to do it anymore. Because I've got another solution that works. It's harder. It takes a little more time. It's a little more labor involved. But it's, uh, it's effective. So I use this other method, which has never had any adverse effect on any of my boas, uh, except for babies, which I'll get into. Um, and the many times that I've, I've been forced to use it since, since then, when I've had a fear that, that I might have an infestation. Because you're always looking for it, right? <laughs> and... I've treated before when I didn't actually have an infestation, but I thought I might because I saw the black specks on a on a boa and I wasn't sure if it was mites or not. And then I'd go to touch it and they'd fall off, whatever the black speck was, and I didn't know if it was a mite. And I'd look hard and I couldn't see if I if I could find one. I couldn't find one. So I'd treat prophylactically just to make sure I didn't have an infestation. So anything new that ever comes in, I always treat it. So if I get a boa from you, I'm going to kill your mites before I bring that animal in. Now, um, some people, for some bizarre reason, think that bringing in a new animal is an opportunity to quarantine and cultivate whatever is on that animal and elect not to treat it at all. Instead, choosing to let the animal risk an infestation with the mites that they may be carrying and eventually have potentially uh, medical problems or physical problems because of the mites that the keeper will eventually find, uh, which apparently is a giddy thing for them so they, they can blame the breeder for sending them mites. Well, I've known, I've known or heard a number of stories where breeders have sent people mites accidentally, only subsequently uh, after sending them, they call the breeder and say, hey, you need to check that animal because I found mites. Well, they didn't send them on purpose. Uh, it has happened. People have sent animals out with mites deliberately, which is a despicable thing to do. But the number of times that I've had mites, four or five times, I only have one time that I suspect I know that someone sent me the mites and who sent them, but I don't know it. I can't know it because everything everything that I brought in, except for that one time, <laughs> I've always treated for mites. The one time I didn't to put it right into a big cage and tried breeding it right away and before you know it, big problem, big mistake. So I, I'm not a believer in cultivating the mites. I'm a believer in prophylactically treating everything new that comes in to make sure I don't get a mite infestation. So if there are mites on that animal, I kill them so that the mites don't infest the rest of my collection. So you never know for sure. Um, and I, I would take no pride in knowing that I got mites from so-and-so breeder. I mean, that's, that's not a point of pride. <laughs> and it's not a point of pride that, oh, I don't use pest strip. Man, you're... You're evil if you do. Well, no, pest strip works. You just have to use it in moderation. Um, put it in, take it out. But anyways, I'm not going to give you a lot of de detail on that because that's not the direction we want to go. I want to explain how you treat 
with permectrin and uh, there'll be a lot of nitty-gritty detail on that. So this is a number of things I want to cover based on my experience with mites. Mites tend to be a localized problem. They theoretically, if you take a mite out of a cage, you put it on a piece of paper, you set it down, you can watch it walk. So, and it walks at a particular speed. So that's probably about 10 feet an hour. So theoretically on paper, if one snake had mites in my basement in a day, if they laid enough eggs, they could infest all of my cages on paper. But that's not the reality. That's not what mites do. So when mites are in a cage and the mite lays eggs under the scales and the eggs hatch out and you have baby mites, they've got a great place to eat. They've got a restaurant right there. An animal, a captive animal that is loaded with blood. And they stay right there. They don't move around. That's why when you find a mite infestation, you will generally find it in one cage or one stack of cages, one section. Even though mites can walk 10 feet an hour, they just stay where they know the meal is. They don't go all over the place. Now, when you get mites all over the place, that is usually because you spread them all over the place. In your cleaning, uh, taking the animal out, holding it, getting mites on you, uh, and then those falling off, ending up on the floor, well, now they're on the floor. They're going to travel looking for a meal. And that 10 feet an hour is very advantageous to them because they're going to find more meals to eat, right? They're not necessarily going to go back to the cage that they came from. So if you're using good husbandry and keeping your eyes open and then go use the methods that I'm going to explain to you when you do find mites, you can keep the spread to a bare bones minimum. Because mites don't really like to travel. They don't run all over the place. So that's basically the history on it. I'm looking down at my notes here to make sure I don't forget anything. So there's going to be a number of additional uh, videos that I show the actual mechanics of how I do it. And how I mix the permectrin. And how I treat different size animals in different types of cages and there's a wide variety of different things I do how I treat a new animal when I bring it in and how I treat my facility to keep spreading mites to a minimum so that's what we're going to get it that's what we're going to get into next easy for me to say so uh, hang on we're going to continue this mighty video <laughs> stay tuned so I've been interested in doing a video about mites for many years. I have never done it, and this is the reason why. Not because uh, I didn't want people to know that I had had mites, because everyone has mites, it's reality. But because of mixing the permectrin 2 and the slightly complicated mathematics that might be involved for some people. I didn't want to just say, well, you use 2% permectrin 2 in water, put it in a pump sprayer. Well, I know it's reality that some people are not mathematicians. And so when I say 2%, that's not easy. So I am going to give you detailed, simple instructions on how to mix permectrin 2 that you can't screw up on. Now, don't post a question about how to do it because this is the only way I'm going to show you how to do it. So if I don't and I leave it open, then 50 people are going to say, well, I use this size spray bottle. How much do I use? I'm going to give you one formula that will be applicable to any pump sprayer you want to use, any method you want to use to mix it, but you have to use my formulation if you're going to use my math. Otherwise, for people who are really good at math, it's 2%. And so here is the formula. Easy peasy. You take a measuring cup and you measure out four cups. Not four of these, 
but four cups as it's marked on the measuring cup. Four cups of clean water and four teaspoons of permectrin 2. You mix all that together. All right, that's easy. Take a measuring cup, measure out four cups of clean water and four teaspoons of permectrin 2. That is 50 to 1. Or that is 2% permectrin 2. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> All right, now this is how I prophylactically, or if I ha ever had mites on babies, which I haven't had uh, mite infestation on babies, but if I ever did, or to prophylactically treat my baby drawers, this is exactly how I'd do it. So I have my spray bottle with permectrin in it. I have the setting to a f as fine a mist as possible. So I'm shooting a very, very fine mist. See that? And first, I am I do this when I'm cleaning. So I change out the paper. I do one spritz on the bottom of the plastic, which just barely has anything on it. Put the paper in. Hard to do with one hand. Put the paper in, and then I do two spritzes on the paper. And that's because of the size of the paper. That's it. So I'm not saturating the paper. I'm just giving it a little mist. And that's enough. So if there were any mites or any mites came and visited, the theory is that that kills the mites. Uh, I haven't had an infestation, like I said, on babies. I've only found them on the big stuff. But this is what I've done to make sure that I don't have them. And I have done after shows. Sometimes I spray the paper. I don't always do this, but uh, I spray the paper before I put the babies back in it, and that's it, just one time. And uh, any mites that got visited with my uh, my babies at a show that could dribbled on the babies, this is enough to kill the mites um, that come in uh, after a show. That's how I treat babies. All right, so this is how I treat an adult animal in a cage. And this is how I treat them prophylactically. That is, if they don't have mites, but I just want to make sure they don't get mites because I found them someplace else. Or if she has mites, so it's identical. Um, so the first thing I do, of course, is I open the cage door. Now you don't want to get you don't want to get permectrin in the water so best case scenario if you're not doing you know 100 100 plus cages take the water out so you're not spraying in the water just common sense i guess but if you do have a lot of animals i made myself a little cover that i put over the water bowl out of plastic and a stick so I cover the water bowl while I spray the animal. Then I don't have to remove the water. So best case scenario, take the water bowl out. If you have a cover, you can cover it. So this is how I spray them. All right, so I have the, uh, the water bowl covered, and I take the sprayer. I have it set on the finest mist possible, and then I spray the animal, the whole, entire animal. You want to get it on the head especially, because for whatever reason, the head is the best place or the tastiest place to suck blood. So you just spray it right on the animal. And I will go into detail about how I've done this without any negative ramifications. All right, so additionally, if this boa had mites, so I'm treating her because she's got mites, I don't want her mites going anyplace else. So what I do is, after I close the door... I apply permectrin to the frame all the way around the cage. And in this way, the mites can't crawl out around the frame. 
See, if you spray the snake, then there's no place to eat. If you're a mite, you're going to be looking for something to eat. I don't know if they're smart enough to stay off or if they will get on her and die, but it, on the chance that some of them are smart enough to figure it out and want to leave and find another place to find a meal, I spray the frame all the way around the frame, just like that, and I just leave it. So it makes the cage dirty because there's permectrin in there. Well, I'll clean it later. But this frame is now a war, a war zone and a death trap to anybody that's in that cage that tries to come out if you're an insect. So any mites try to come out, they won't. But if they do try to come out, they will die because there's no place to go. And if you sprayed the restaurant, you sprayed the animal, they can't go on the animal to eat because that will kill them. So you have an effect set up a zone where any mites that are in there that are alive before you spray them are going to starve to death over the next two or three weeks. Got that? So we'll go into more detail. Next is a tub. So how do you deal with a tub if you find mites in a tub? And I've, and I've done this before. I found mites in one tub and the tub above, I didn't find any mites. The tub to the left, I didn't find any mites. The other one above in Kitty Corner, I didn't find any mites. Now that doesn't mean there aren't any mites there, but there isn't an infestation like there was in the one tub. So again, I spray directly on the snake. So anything that's over about three feet, I don't hesitate to spray the animal. So I spray it directly on the animal. And then any mites that are in there, I don't want them coming out. So I spray the perimeter of the tub all the way around, just like that. Now they can't walk up the side of the tub. There's nowhere to go. So there, any mites that are in there are going to starve to death because the snake has been sprayed and the outside of the tub has been sprayed, preventing any mites from coming out alive. So they're going to starve to death. Now, the next thing I want to do, well, I close the drawer. The next thing I want to do is I spray the rack itself. So all along the bottom and the sides and the top. I don't want any mites that are in there to get out. So I'm spraying all the surfaces. So this isolates mites. So if there are mites in here or there are mites in there or there are mites in there, they're not getting out. Now, truth be told, the most important way or the most complete way to do this is if you have an infestation in one place, prophylactically treat everything. So you spray every single adult animal. I don't spray all the frames and everything, but I spray the individual animal. I only spray the frame and the outside of the tubs if I find an infestation on a specific animal. If I'm spraying everything else prophylactically, I just spray the animal. Now this is very, very important. I'm going to say this more than once. Once you, I, I'm going to say it later. So it, it'll be a little bit more detailed to explain why I do this, but it's very important. So you need to watch the whole video. So you get this one additional little tidbit that I'm going to give you in a bit. Now, the next thing I do prophylactically, and I do this regardless, about every three months, I spray the floor. So any insects that are walking on the floor are going to die. Any mites, if I'm cleaning cages, um, if I have mites and I don't know it yet, I'm going to be dropping mites off of my hands onto the floor for a period of a month, six weeks, maybe two months before I realize that I have mites. So while I'm cleaning, anything that falls off of my hands onto the floor is going to die because I've done this. So that takes quite a bit of uh, fluid. Uh, of mixed permetrin, but the permetrin on the floor, any beetles, if a wasp lands on the floor, he's going to go into convulsions and die. 
any mites that fall off of my hands or off of dirty aspen when I'm cleaning cages or if you use newspaper, if they fall on the floor, they're going to die. They're not going anywhere. So this helps isolate your problem, helps keep it from spreading around. So this is another really important step that you need to go through if you're going to treat your entire facility. I do this again on the floor about every three months. It lasts more than three months. If I spray the floor and three or four or even five months from now, I haven't sprayed it again, I will find dead wasps on the floor or crickets. Any bug that ends up on the floor is going to die because of the residue that's on the floor. It's pretty amazing, amazing stuff. So that's, that's an important step that you need to do to help prevent from spreading mites all around your facility or to keep the mites from spreading around your facility. Because the only way that way is for them to be transferred by your hands or from crawling from cage to cage, which is uh, I found to be very unusual, very, very unusual. This is another very important little tidbit, something that took me a long time to learn, uh, but I'm gonna pass it on today. So a while back, 10, 12 years ago, I had gotten a mite infestation and I wasn't going to use pest strip again. This was the first time after I had decided I wasn't going to use pest strip. I was going to use permectrin. So it took me a while to learn this. So for several years, I would find an infestation of mites and then I would treat that animal and a couple animals around in the stack. Try to do it as effectively as I knew how to do it. Even sprayed the floor. And three or four months later, I would have mites again. They would pop up again. And th this includes spraying every single snake in the basement. A lot of snakes. So you spray them, and then about two weeks later you spray them again. And then about two weeks later you, can, you spray them again. So, And there's a little bit more to it, and that's what I'm going to get into. So I did this, and then three or four months later, it happened again. And then I treated, sprayed, three or four months later, it happened again. So I had animals, it was several years. So I have talked to a number of other people that have been chasing mites around for years. And I tried to explain to them how to do it, and that's what I'm doing in this video. But I finally learned why they kept on popping up. It wasn't because the permection wasn't killing them. It's because the individual boas are the restaurant that the mites eat at, right? So there's a meal to be gotten on any single, any and every single boa in your facility. When you spray that animal with permectrin, there's no meal to be gotten there anymore. Those mites have to go someplace else to find a meal. So if you sprayed the frame, as I showed, uh, there's nowhere to go. There's no place to go for a meal. They're going to starve to death because they can't get out of that cage. You spray the animal, the animal is good and protected until they shed. <laughs> now they've shed off the permectrin. So if you spray an animal and two weeks later, and you sprayed the frame, and two weeks later the animal sheds, the mites that have been in there holding out, wishing there was some place to eat, who are not walking out because they're not going on that frame, and they weren't eating off of the snake because she had permectrin on her, now there's no, a restaurant open for business again. So you have to pro prophylactically treat, and then you have to watch for sheds. And every single time an animal sheds, you have to spray it again. So thankfully, boas don't shed a lot. So you have to stay on top of that. And once you did that, and once I did that, I eliminated them. So spray everything, every animal. I don't spray all the cage, inside of the cage because they're not going to eat the aspen. I spray the frame of the cage on the outside if I have an infestation. If I'm prophylactically spraying, I just spray the animals. And then I, I'm watching everybody close. Anybody who sheds, they get sprayed again. I keep my tank handy. And I've had my floor sprayed. So anybody falls on the, any mites fall on the floor, they're going to be dead. Any restaurant sheds, you know, a mite restaurant where they get their blood, I spray it. 
now they can't eat there either. So that is the, the key to long-term success in eliminating this prog problem that some of you, you don't have to tell me who, but some of you have been chasing around for years and they keep on popping up, keep on popping up. And you imagine that the, the treatment that you're giving them, they're resistant to it. Well, I don't believe in that. I don't think that's a thing. If it was, then we would have collections dying all over the place from uh, treatment resistant mites. And that's not the case. So here's how I treat for anything new that comes into the house. First thing I do, I spray the floor where I'm bringing the animal in. So I got a freshly sprayed floor to set the animal on and I do it all the way to the door. So the floor is sprayed fresh. So when I bring the animal in, I just set the bag on the floor, on the wet floor, and then I spray the bag, but I'll show you that. I also spray my hands. So when I touch the bag, if there are any mites on the outside of the bag, I'm not gonna get live mites on my hands. Then I'm gonna open the box outside. I do not bring the box in the house. Then I take the bag out of the box because I am not bringing the box into the house. I'm just bringing in what I have to in the house. Then I take the bag and I bring that bag into the house. And I take that bag and I set it on the floor that's already wet. So anything that fell off the bag fell onto the wet floor where the mites will die. And then I take the bag on the floor I don't get a retake, so I gotta get this right. <laughs> and I spray the bag, I soak the bag. I turn the bag over, I spray the other side of the bag. So the animal is in the bag. If there are any mites on the bag, mites are gonna be dead. Done. Now I just let it sit there for a while. For a few hours it's heated in here nice warm floor then i put them in a drawer and the drawer i put in i spray the outside of the the side walls on the drawer just like i did uh in that tub in the earlier video and that's pretty much it and actually i watch the animal and for a couple of weeks and i'll i'll spray the animal itself especially if it goes into a shed which a lot of times it does and uh, just to make sure that I've killed any mites. And that is my procedure for bringing in new stuff. So that pretty much sums up all the uh, high points as far as killing mites, keeping mites out of your collection, and, uh, and my experience doing it. So I hope that's helpful. If it is, if you liked it, whether you've had mites or not, put a comment in the comment section. It helps the algorithm so that we get more exposure, more people watch, the more people watch, the more exposure I get, the more encouraged I'll be to do more videos. So I'm going to do one on regurgitation, which somebody just suggested the other day, which is an important topic. Uh, boa regurgitation and uh, many other things coming. So like it, love it, subscribe to it, and hit that bell notification. Until then, see you soon.